you know, anybody, almost anybody <clears throat> these days with the technology that's available to us can make a well-produced film of two people sitting at a table talking. And if you can find a way to make that interesting, you might impress somebody. And they might say, okay, we're not going to give you $50 million, but here's $200,000. Go make three people sitting in a room talking. You know, go make two people sitting in a park talking. Go make something a, that will ha you'll have a bit better opportunity to show what you can do. And that's, that's all I've done is step by step. I've made slightly better and better, bigger and bigger films. And it was because of those, you know, these films I made for the asylum, they were, technically they were mockbusters. I mean, I didn't think of them that way. Um, I'm not trying to rip off um, other people's movies. That, that doesn't interest me in the slightest, and I'm not trying to satirize them. Um, the idea of the mockbuster from the asylum's uh, playbook is not so much to satirize the individual project, but to satirize the idea that $200 million is required to make an entertaining movie. It's not. Um, and so for 200000 or 300 or 350000 I made a couple of movies for them that were, you know, incrementally bigger and better than the independent film I'd made that got me those jobs. Um, and it was the fact that I had done one of these films for them well. I delivered the script that they wanted. I delivered it on time. I was relatively easy to work with during the development process. I don't know if the director of development would agree with me 100% on that because, you know, any creative people are going to have clashes. Um, but in the end, I remember that they're the ones paying the bills and they understand what their market is. So I give them what they want. And then I go out and I make the best film I possibly can on the money they give me. And I put together the best team of people, people who aren't going to say, oh, it's only a $200,000 crappy asylum mockbuster. They're going to say, we're going to make this the best battleship movie we can or the best um, alien planet movie we can or the best zombie film we can given the resources available to us. And it was the fact that I had done that and delivered to them what they needed and something that showed I actually cared about the material and that I had some intelligence and I had some style. It was that that made them come to me and say, we want you to write a movie called Shark Storm. And for me to be in a position to say, no, why would I want to write a movie called Shark Storm? Haven't we had enough dumb shark movies? And they went away and said, all right, we'll find somebody else to do it. And then a month later, they came back to me and they said, what we really want you to do is write a movie called Sharknado. And I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And if I can write it that way, then sure, I'll do it. I'd love to do it. And thank God they said, yes, it's okay to be ridiculous on a movie called Sharknado. You know, and from there, in the last two years, I've had... Uh, some modicum of success that hopefully now is leading to bigger and better things. But it's all because step by step I proved that I was I was reliable, that I could do what they needed me to do. And I only got that opportunity because I'd done what I said I could do. I went out, I raised the money, I made this film. And instead of just saying, take a chance on me, I said, here, this is what I can do. And I can do it for you. <laughs>